I'm Hal Mogridge. You've asked me why the archives are valuable to the Landscape Institute. I'm a consultant landscape architect to Colvin and Mogridge, having retired a few years ago, but still working a bit. <clears throat> We're the oldest landscape practice in the United Kingdom. I started work as a landscape architect with Geoffrey Jenica when I was quite young. I was trained as an architect and I worked with him for three years. And he's very significant to the archive because the archive contains a great collection of his very beautiful drawings. And we're actually going to shortly give him to the archive a new drawing of a scheme that he made at Willin Garden Hospital, which has been demolished. So the drawing is very interesting because it shows his ideas of using Mondrian's paintings as an inspiration for a layout. It worked technically perfectly. After a few years, I worked for Greater London Council and then I was asked by Brenda Colvin to become her partner. She was 72 when she asked me and she had a lot of wonderful work. She was a founder member of the Landscape Institute and she was a great thinker. And it was a wonderful opportunity for me, as well as being extremely interesting, getting to know her and working on her projects as well as my own smaller projects. She was active for about six years and then had about four or five years in semi-retirement before she died. I think the really important thing about the archives is that they are the enduring cultural, historical and evidentially value of the Institute. They give the Institute a sense of identity and they are what the Institute is. So if anyone wants to find out as a member what the Institute represents, the archives tell them. And also they record the work of previous landscape architects to avoid the need to repeat things all the time, to rediscover everything, every generation. Members can become familiar with the archive and thus they can learn what their predecessors have done so successfully and build upon it. Also the archives can be used to promote the Institute because there are these wonderful things. There's the whole of Brenda Colvin's collection of drawings. I remember going to the archive and some students from Manchester came to look at Brenda Colvin's drawings and they were completely excited by these huge hand-drawn drawings. They'd been working on computers. They hadn't realised how drawings were made 30 years ago and these were the drawings which led to Eggborough Power Station and Gail Common, this artificial hill she made, which we finished for her over a period of 40 years, but she did the original design. So all these archives, they're the storage of knowledge already acquired and a means of a dissemination. They teach people to know the past and thus to understand the present, for information is power. <clears throat> I think that's the important thing, that information is power. And if people don't use the archive, they lose some of the power to do well in their design. And then the archives, that's the archives for the Institute members, but they're also immensely useful for other people to come and find out what landscape architecture is, to look at the contents of the archive and they can thus understand what landscape architects do and how they do it and what their values are. So. It's the secondary value is for other agencies and private users. <clears throat> and very useful for students, of course, who are trying to learn what landscape architecture is. Another use which I've come across is the Salisbury Crematorium it was needing to be done up, improved. It was getting rather old and ragged. Brenda Colvin's drawing of the crematorium was in the archive. They came and looked and saw what the original design intentions were. That's another very helpful use for the archive. And I, another use is for things like lectures. I recently had to give a lecture on university landscapes and I only really knew about two la university landscapes. So I was supplied by the archive with lots of fascinating drawings of university landscapes which had been carried out in the 1960s and 70s and which enabled 
my lecture to be broad, to include many people like Mary Mitchell, who did a listed residential part of Birmingham University. There, were, there was information about that. There were drawings of the Keele University, of Lancaster University, and for Bath University, which I actually used, the archive was in the university itself, in Bath. So that was using another archive. And of course, archives swap with each other. They communicate with each other. So you don't necessarily use only the archive in Merle, in Reading. You can combine all the archives, but without the landscape archive in Reading, there's no basic format, no basic knowledge about landscape architecture to use. Is that long enough?